Well, I'm here today with George Newmeyer, the excellent journalist who's been covering so much of what's been going on in the Catholic Church since the Summer of Shame. He really, really put the pressure and gave us a lot of information on ex-Cardinal McCarrick. And right now he's in Rome and he's been exposing a lot of things. He's the guy who found this image in the church of Santa Maria Traspatina uh, with the woman nursing the dog. Talked about that a couple days and, and we'll see an interview that he recently did with one of the Amazonian people about what it means for an Amazonian woman to nurse a dog and why this would be depicted on top of a Catholic altar in a Catholic church in Rome. And then also the video that he did uh, where he, he bumped into some cardinals, Cardinal Tobin, uh, and others on the streets of the Vatican after they had been dining at dinner. So, George, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is great. And uh, everybody watching, George is in Rome, and his his Wi-Fi is a little different, so he might get pixelated. There's a little bit of a, a of a delay, but uh, please bear with us as we move along in the interview. And we'll begin with our prayer. We'll pray the Our Father in Latin, and then we'll jump right into this. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniant regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et emite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. St. Pius X, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, George. Well, it was good to see you. Last weekend, I was with you. We were having drinks. Yeah, that's right. We were having drinks at the bar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a good event. Yep. Yeah. That so was what, uh, what, one of what, the high points of my trip here. Yeah, that was a good... I When I got to Rome, I felt discouraged. Then I got together with everyone and started going to Mass and, and meeting up with you and others, and then kind of left feeling a little bit more encouraged. But generally, the situation in Rome is still very negative. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, the mood is, uh, I would say, kind of bleak. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people feel powerless uh, yeah. in the face of this um, modernist juggernaut. And uh, because so few cardinals have stepped forward to try and stop it, uh, the, that feeling of powerlessness is increasing. Yeah. Um, what else has been going on in the last week since I've, I've not been there? Well, it's, you know, the, the Amazon Synod has opened and uh, it's turning out to be as bad as uh, we assumed it would be. And, um, you know, the, the Vatican, the, the pagan festival in the Vatican gardens really set the tone, has set the tone for the Senate. And it's uh, just turning out to be a, um, you know, a, a kind of plunge into paganism where the church is uh, uh, going out of its way to show respect to a, to a culture that really doesn't deserve respect because it's not, uh, it's not Christian and it's not rooted in reality. It's, it's, uh, it's a pagan it's essentially a pagan culture, and it's it, it really is pantheism. So yeah. uh, pantheism is not uh, worthy of, of our uh, respect. Perhaps we could apply some understanding to, to the, the plight of the Amazonian people, but pantheism in and of itself is, is not uh, something that the church could possibly learn from. I mean, the church is a perfect society. First of all, the church has always understood herself to be a perfect society because the church is embedded in Jesus Christ, and therefore the church doesn't have anything to learn from a primitive uh, culture like the Amazonian one. And I know that that this sounds very uh, um, arrogant and chauvinistic and all that, but that but the church is not when the church is speaking, it's not human beings speaking; it's human beings speaking on behalf of of God, and and therefore you know that's the basis for. The church's claims. So it's not as if, you know, this is human beings talking down to the Amazonians. Uh, we stand in the same condition as the Amazonian people. We, we're, we're, you know, we're all creatures of God, and therefore, as creatures of God, we have a duty to to our Creator, and it's our Creator who generates religion. 
religion doesn't come from within us. It comes down to us from our creator. And But uh, the, the modernists in the Vatican right now, uh, having embraced uh, subjectivism, philosophical subjectivism, uh, they, they are mu very much pushing the idea that religion is something that comes from within and that it's something subjective. Right. But that is completely contrary to the uh, dogmas and the teachings of the church. Religion is something objective, not subjective. And therefore, not every religious experience is valuable. You know, as T.S. Eliot once said, not everything, you know, we, we, in our complacent uh, modern times, we seem to think that anything that's labeled spiritual has to be good. That's not necessarily the case. There's bad, there's good spirituality and bad spirituality. And it, and, and the, the basis for identifying that is, is objective reality. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. So so often in the modern time, they think of religion as emerging from community. We hear this all the time. And anyone's religious experience is valid. And the modernist heretics will say every religious experience is necessarily somehow an experience of Christ, which is not true. It is not true. If you go right. to a satanic black mass or a seance and you have a religious experience, you did not encounter Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Logos. You did not encounter that. If you're part of a Viking right. religion that believes that Thor and Odin favor your people and hate all other people, and you capture those people and sacrifice one of them as a human sacrifice, you did not encounter the Logos. That was not a valid religious experience. And in the Amazon, they have examples of cannibalism, sodomy, uh, Mixed marriages, divorce, uh, polygamy, infanticide, infanticide uh, all of these things are there. It's not that they're just against the Catholic revealed religion, which they are. Oh, and I should add idolatry. Everybody thinks idolatry is no big deal, huh? It's the first commandment in the list of the Ten Commandments. Right. They have, they have idolatry, and they're parading this in the Vatican City right now. All of these things are against the Catholic religion. They're also against natural law. People need to realize that right. even yeah. if you were raised in the Amazonian and you've never spoken to a priest, you can. This is what's taught in Vatican I. It's taught by Aquinas. It's taught by Augustine. It's taught by St. Paul. By observing creation, you can come to understand that there is a creator. There is a moral law. There is an afterlife and that things like idolatry are sinful. Murder is sinful. Adultery is sinful all the way down the list. This is what is true. This is what we Catholics hold to be true about natural law and religion. So what they're parading ab about right now is sacrilegious, blasphemous. It's got to go. Shame on the Pope. Shame on Francis for allowing this. And shame on the cardinals and the bishops and all that who, who are saying nothing and allowing this to go. The Cardinals wear a red hat because they should be ready for martyrdom. They got to stand up for something. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's, let's yeah, run. The, the uh, Senate, go ahead. Yes, George. Well, the Senate is just, yeah, it's just one uh, gigantic violation of the first commandment. It's, yes. it's simply uh, placing strange gods before the triune God. Yes. And uh, the Bible doesn't say that... Uh, divine elements can be found within strange gods. Uh, it says the exact reverse. It says that if you worship strange gods, if you show respect to idols and strange gods, you'll lose your soul. Yes. Uh, there's nothing good about, there's nothing good about idol worship. Uh, and yet here we have a Pope who's basically saying that God wills idol worship and that he wants uh, a diversity of, um, religions you know regardless of whether or not they're rooted in reality and uh that's that's a prescription for people losing their soul and uh, it's, a, it's also obviously a formula for uh destroying the the essence and rationale for the catholic church mm -hmm. why uh and that's that's the obvious contradiction here with the synod is why would you need to evangelize a people who are already saved why would you why would you need to evangelize a people from whom you're supposed to learn and you're supposed to listen and you're supposed to to find the the goodness and the nobility and the wisdom in their in their culture 
That that makes no sense. And so yeah. evangelization, uh, as used by the synod, can only mean uh, left wing politics. Right. You know, the advancement of left wing politics, and primarily through the United Nations. And that that's what's really going on here. Is this is a an, an excuse and a pretext for the Catholic Church and the United Nations to work closely together in the Amazon. Uh, uh, for the sake of their left-wing, um, climate-change-driven, socialist-driven projects. Right. Yeah. The the sad thing is, when I was there, I realized these people, these poor people, Amazonian people, albeit they're idolaters, they're being used as stage props by the UN and by the, the Vatican. That's all they are, stage props. They're going to be given a ticket and flown yeah. back home. In this, yeah, in their... yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I actually uh, have been talking to various people, and one well-informed source told me that the German bishops actually flew a lot of these uh, Indian activists, Amazonian activists, to the Synod. Uh, they paid for their first-class uh, airplane trips to the Synod, and uh, it's really a German money that's uh, behind all of this propaganda and, and all these pe these activists coming over here. And and being yeah they are you know they are being used as guinea pigs, on whom the these uh, papal dilettantes and UN bureaucrats can experiment and and can and can use them as a justification for making demands on Brazil and the other countries that the Amazonians uh, reside in, you know so this is sort of a power play by the Vatican and the UN to tr to try and. Um, uh, uh, make inroads within Brazil and these other countries for their projects. Yeah, if you catch which have nothing to do, obviously they're they're temporal projects. They're they're projects that have to do with with uh, opposing, you know, uh, uh, foresting and things like that. They they have absolutely nothing to do with the salvation of souls. They're simply uh, this world sort of projects, and it and. Uh, you know, there's a reason why this synod has attracted so many UN observers. In fact, even John Allen, somebody as liberal as John Allen at Crux, he noted that this is a synod that has been dominated by the UN, by the UN, and that you know, at the press conferences, who shows up at the press conference but a bunch of UN people? Yeah. You know, there are more UN people up there than bishops. That's you know, John Allen. It's a synod not of bishops but with bishops. And it's a synod that's, you know, full of these outside observers like Jeffrey, Jeffrey Sachs. You know, Jeffrey Sachs has a consulting racket where he goes around and gets paid for telling religious orders to um, divest from oil companies. So, uh, you know, we need to follow the money and follow the power here. And if we do, we'll see what the real meaning of this synod consists of. Yeah, it's not it's not evangelization, but but left wing left-wing political organizing through the United Nations. Yeah. Yeah, this has got German bishops written all over it. If you catch the bishop, I mean, if you catch the devil by the ankle, the bottom of his boot says, made in Germany. So <laughs> much so much yeah. evil out of Germany. Um, well, I think we should, we should, let's run this interview. Now this, we're going to, we're going to begin. We have two videos that George has done. This first one is an interview that George had with an Amazonian. He's an Amazonian gentlemen is that right oh yeah he, he was uh i think a brazilian he he repre okay. he's a representative of the synod and um he was quite, kind of acting like a docent at this propaganda show <laughs> at the at that uh, roman parish and uh i i saw a chance here to ask him about that picture of the amazonian mother nursing a dog or a four-legged creature of some kind gross right horrible my wife saw that and she's like this is it i can't take it anymore i can't take it anymore this is disgusting you know that sure we should tell people a little bit about it santa maria Traspatina is uh it's not part of saint peter's but it's the the main church closest to saint peter's as you're walking you know down the big broadway into the piazza of saint peter's into saint peter's the vatican city states right there it's just outside. And if you're facing the Vatican, it's on your right side. As I understand it, Georgia, you've been there quite a few times now. That's kind of been given over as ground zero for the Amazonian religion. Yeah, I think they've dedicated that church to uh, a kind of propaganda show about the, the plight of the Amazonians and the 
culture of the Amazonians. And uh, it's just, uh, if, if you go around the church, um, the propaganda is just, it, it's in the side chapels. It's in the main, um, it's in the interior of the church. Um, it's on the altar. You know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty appalling. And, um, and uh, it's a Carmelite church, you know, it's, it's a, that church is run by the Carmelites. So that tells you, it tells you uh, something about the, um, the condition of the Carmelite order that that church has been completely turned over to these Amazonian uh, left-wing propaganda, some of whom are, um, some of whom are, uh, for example, if you look at one of the side chapels, there's a, there's a quilt, and on the quilt is a, uh, an activist. So you can see a little picture of an activist in red, and I've been told. No, oh, we lost. Five farms violently, and uh, I don't know if you caught the last bit, but at any rate, uh, it, it's a shrine to to very raw left wing politics in the Amazon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's. I'm going to run the interview here. Hopefully, it works out great. And uh, at any time, George, tell me to pause if you want to make a a comment of what's going on here. I can easily just pause it. So um, we're going to go here <laughs> with. Right. Uh, this interview. Here we go. Okay. This, uh, wait, wait. Uh, is okay? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this kind of, of this. what is the significance of this picture right here? Yeah, that's that's my question. Okay. Uh, the means of this photo like that, the connection uh, with the Amazon people, with the animal, the forest, the environment. So that's of course not common, but for. I, I want to pause here. <laughs> He's, you say to him, tell me about this picture. And he goes, oh, you mean about the connections of humans and the environment and the animal? It's like, yeah, that's a literal connection right there of a woman's breast with yeah. an animal's mouth. Yeah. It's, I mean, animals lick their own tail ends. It's disgusting. I can't believe it. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it running here. But was this contrived? Did this actually, or is this real? Does, does this actually happen? Or? No, this actually happened. This is a real... Yeah, this is a real okay. photo, but that's not like a common everyday, for example, the, the indigenous mother give like, for example, the milk from the animal. Mm -hmm. But for then... But isn't this, isn't, wouldn't this be considered contrary to human dignity by the church, Catholic Church? Uh, of course, for, especially the church is more uh, conservative, but for example, for the Amazon people, the Amazon uh, uh, indigenous who live there, it's like, it's not a strange. It's not strange. It's the real life of them. It's not common, but it's not strange. This is the mean. So, George, this kind of shocked me because you, you you made a good point to me. You know, in this against human dignity, and he said, "Well, yes, for the church, which is very conservative, but for the Amazonian people, yeah, this is just raw relativism." Yeah, yeah, and he, and it's funny that he would present this as an avant-garde practice. You know, women. A, a female, uh, a mother nursing an animal, a four-legged creature, that that's somehow progressive rather than uh, primitive. Right. And, uh, and that we are the, we're the hidebound conservatives who have a problem with women nursing weasels yes. and uh, dogs. Um, so, yeah, uh, I thought that was. Yeah. Uh, but at least he, at least he seemed to acknowledge that the church, that the church uh, is, is opposed to, uh, to women nursing four-legged creatures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. At least he's somewhat aware of that. Okay. I'm gonna continue rolling here. Here we go. Yeah. But what's what's the point of though of the Catholic Church putting this in a side chapel of one of its churches? Uh, uh, here. Yeah. Uh, because you want to show the reality of the Amazon. Because you know now uh, realize uh, it's happening here in Rome, the synod of uh, Amazon. So yeah. everything is here is about the Amazon. Right. But is this? Yeah, thanks for the info, guy. <laughs> Everything here is on the Amazon. Yeah. We kind of know that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and apparently, apparently, the imperative, the imperative of the Senate is that we we have to celebrate the worst of Amazonian culture, not the best of it, but the worst of it. That somehow we don't, you can't really appreciate a culture unless you're unless you're celebrating its weirdest practices. Right. That's, yeah. that's a rather strange notion. Of me. Yeah, it's cr now, now this guy you're talking to. You said he's sort of a docent, but is he a Catholic? Is he a Amazonian? I assume, I, mean, he, I assume he's a Catholic, but my guess is that he's one of these uh, ringers 
who was flown, you know, flown in by the German bishops, right? Because they need, you know, they, they needed some warm bodies, warm Amazonian bodies, to make it look like, you know, the bishops were to the Amazonian people, you know, demanding, you know, that the church uh, come down to the Amazon and and do more work down in the Amazon. I I think my guess is that this guy is probably like a George Soros style paid activist. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Continuing on. But I guess my question is why, why would the church want to portray Amazonian culture in this light where human beings and animals are being treated as if they're exactly the same? Uh, the, the, The point is not like exactly the same, but it's the connection with the, the, the people and the earth, you know, for example, the, the Pope write like the, the Laudato Si about, for example, the common house. So everyone lives in the same house, the animal, uh, the forest, the people, the human being. So everyone is connected. This is the means. But uh, how do you? It, it, the problem here is, yeah, you know what? In America and in Rome and in Italy and France and, you know, China, wherever, we all have dogs and pets in our house. We live in the same yeah. house. They get dog food or cat food, or whatever. They don't get nursed by the mother of the home. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, this is clearly blending of species. It may not be outright bestiality, but it's like a it's like yeah. a it's a sign of bestiality that the bodily fluid that nourishes a human child from the mother's breast is received by a beast. Right. Oh. Yeah, it's a it's an uh, it's a inherently disordered act because man is not on the same level as the uh, uh, you know man is a rational animal he's above right. the irrational animals and therefore it's it's contrary to his dignity to to act as if he is an irrational animal. Yeah. All right, here we go. Continuing. Respect nature, though, if you don't recognize the hierarchy in nature. Uh, sorry. How do you? How can you? Re- how can you appreciate nature if you're not recognizing the hierarchy that exists in nature? That man is above the animals, and, th- and that the animals are subordinate to man. Now, are you getting in trouble here, George? What's going on? Oh yeah, this sort of thuggish uh, priest in the back. He wasn't wearing a collar or anything like that. He also looked like a George Soros style paid activist. He he's the one who shut it down. He's the one who told the docent to tell me that I, I couldn't shoot in the in the um, church. Of course, if it had been a friendly interview in which I was extolling Amazonian culture, I'm sure that same guy would have oh, yeah. told the docent to, to keep the camera going for as long as possible. So yeah, it was just a made up rule on the spot to. Uh, shut down what this thuggish priest uh, correctly perceived as um, an interview that wasn't in their in their political interest. Yeah. And but I, I also think that he, he noticed that I was focusing on this outrageous picture of a woman nursing a, a, a dog or a weasel. And uh, he probably, you know, deduced from on the picture that this wasn't going to be in their interest. <laughs> I can't believe they put this up. George, I can't believe yeah, actually, some genius said, oh, yeah, a- here's a here's a it looks like a, a you know, a, a Photoshop kind of a thing. Everything is connected and they actually have arrows of it, you know, connecting the woman and the dog and the baby. I can't believe someone actually thought they could get away with it. They really are bold now, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Of all of all the things I've seen in Rome, that's the most outrageous uh, poster I've seen. Uh, and, and that's, you know, why, <laughs> you know, but to me, to me, it captures the sheer obnoxiousness of the Pope Francis's ecological kick yeah. that he's got this, you know, it just shows how over the top and bonkers, uh, the environmentalist movement that he signed on to is. And, uh, you know, it, and it also shows the leveling, there's a leveling spirit an egalitarian leveling spirit in, in everything that the church now does. So in, in, in economics, the church is pushing the economic leveling of socialism in ecology. It's pushing the, the biological leveling of man, rational man and, and um, the irrational animals being on the same level. 
being, you know, part of the same ecosystem, behaving the same way, having the same needs, et cetera. And then uh, uh, theologically, there's the leveling of saying that every religion is equal, every path to God, every path to heaven is equally good. So to me, it's it, this all, there's a, a very destructive egalitarianism at work in everything that the church now says and does. Well said. All right, let's continue and see what happens next. Which press you are from? Yeah. Oh, the American Spectator. They said it's not like allowed to record. Okay. Are you a volunteer with this? Yes, I come from Brazil. Oh, I'm not a volunteer from here, but I come from Brazil. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Hold on, I'm going to get a shot here of the of the image if I can get it. Uh, there it is, right there. So, uh, yeah, you see, you can't. It says here, "Todo estas." I think it's conectida, conectido. Can't remember. Can't really see it myself there, but and you got the the mother, I, and then you got the other, and then you've got nature, the cosmos. So people can't. I put a picture up the other day, and I don't want to put too much pictures up because it's kind of weird and nasty. But there's the I. There is the other, the baby, and then there is the other natural cosmos. That's the dog. So this is like an icon of what this Amazon synod is all about. The human, the baby, and then nature literally attached to the breast as a dog or a weasel. Is this a we what is What animal yeah. is this? It's a weird looking thing. I'm not sure. I, I, I Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what, what kind of animal it is. Uh, and not only is the whole thing disgusting, the image itself is kind of pornographic. It's got a naked woman on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, I guess that, you know, the best, I guess you could say it's sort of like the na na uh, National Geographic, you know, remember, remember PBS used to have those National Geographic documentaries where for some reason they, it was okay to show naked women in Africa, you know. <laughs> As long as they're, uh, it's kind of an. It just shows you how. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just shows you how PBS liberals, how condescending PBS liberals are. Right. That they treat these like, oh, these are other people. Are, yeah. Are people aren't like us, so we can. Uh, therefore, we can kind of show them in a way we wouldn't show white people. Right. Right. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. All right. Here we go. I'm guessing this is where you get kicked out. Yeah, it's in. Okay. So, are you filming this on a uh, on an iPhone? What's your camera here? What? Are, how are you doing this? Oh yeah, it's just an Android uh, phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Camera yeah, phone. Just... Camera phone. Wow. And you said that's a Carmelite church. Yeah, I believe it's run by the Carmelites. Yeah. What a shame. Our Lady Mount Carmel pray for us, you know? Hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, it's, it's, so um, tell us what else, I mean, what what's going on in this church? What else are you seeing besides the, the woman nursing a dog? Oh, in that church, it's there's a lot of propaganda about how the, you know, corporations are destroying the Amazon with, with uh, foresting and, you know, with cutting down trees and, and, uh, you know, they claim that, you know, chemicals are being spilled into the Amazon river and things like right. that. So a lot of that's just, um, political propaganda. And then, uh, they have a lot of sort of pictures of martyrs, you know, left-wing martyrs, you know, uh, and, and, you know, important, important activist figures in their movement. Mm -hmm. I, a lot, a lot of those people I, I couldn't even identify, and I, I don't know the significance of those people really. Okay. But um, it was, you know, uh, it's just, you know, to me, it's it's completely out of place in a Catholic church. You know, it's it's basically, you know, uh, um, you know, there's there's absolutely, I would say, zero Catholic content to the to the um, presentation. You know, it's it's not about the saving of souls. It's not about bringing people to God, bringing people to Jesus Christ. It's simply about um, temporal projects uh, that, you know, the Catholic Church wants to um, uh, to conduct uh, alongside the United Nations. Yeah. 
And, um, and so this, this I, I see this, the whole point of the Synod, I think, is to weaken the Catholic faith and strengthen the alliance between the Baptists. And um, that's, you know, the, it's not, you know, just like the, uh, the, the misnamed Synod on the Family, you know, the whole purpose of the Synod on the Family wasn't to strengthen the family, it was to weaken the family by endorsing adultery. Yeah. And, and that was the upshot of the Synod on the Family. So similarly, this quote-unquote evangelization Synod is designed not to advance evangelization, but to, to undermine it and neutralize it and, and render evangelization um, ir- uh, utterly irrelevant. You know, why would, why would you need to evangelize the people who, uh, who's already enlightened? You know, they're, they're apparently we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be learning from them. We're not supposed to be evangelizing them. We're supposed to actually, they're supposed to be kind of evangelizing us. And we're supposed to be, uh, you know, learning, learning from their, their quote unquote ancestral wisdom. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's very, uh, once again, you know, all the terms that this Pope uses, he uses in an, in an Orwellian way. They always end up meaning the exact opposite yeah. of what he, uh, of how they sound. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you think, ladies? We have, what, uh, 1,600 people are watching live right now. Uh, ladies who are watching, do you want to be evangelized by these people? Do you want to be taught that you need to breastfeed your pets, your dogs, your animals? No ridiculous you know you should see the comments that are streaming in here george i know you can't see them but everyone's just like this is disgusting it's pure evil and uh we're gonna look at another video shortly but I, i'm talking to george newmeyer he's in rome and i want to inc- there's a link beneath this video I, I really want you guys everybody watching dr taylor marshall channel show i want you to support george if, if it weren't for george newmeyer we wouldn't know about the nursing of the dog photo in a Catholic church outside St. Peter's. We wouldn't know about that. George is the one that found it originally. He shot the picture. He went back and did the interview. He's doing important work. We wouldn't know about this without George Newmeyer. So he has a GoFundMe page. He's doing this sort of, you know, bootstrap, just getting out there and, and doing it. And so he needs support to get this. He did a lot of great research with McCarrick and uh, with other cardinals and what's going on in Rome. So uh, we need to support him because the mainstream media is not going to go in and take these pictures and run these interviews. So I would encourage everyone, hit the link below this video and please support George Newmeyer and his journalism. Uh, okay, so uh, before we look at this next video, which is uh, when you met with, let's see, it was Bishop McElroy of San Diego, Cardinal Tobin, Big Tobin, and then um, and then Cardinal O'Malley, right? Right. Yeah, they were. It was last Sunday night. Uh, they were having dinner on this street called Borgia Borgio Pio, which I'm yeah. sure you're familiar with. Yep. It's just uh, that's where, that's right where, off the Vatican. Uh, right. Yeah, it's right next to the um, one of the gates of the Vatican. Yeah, and Saint it's Anne's where the gate. I was. I was I was told that that's you know that's where all the ecclesiastical sort of heavyweights eat you know in the, in the restaurants along that road and so uh, it uh, so these I I saw these three gentlemen uh, eating at uh, one of those restaurants and I you know I waited until their dinner was over and I knew that they'd have to go back to the Vatican and so I just sort of hung out on that street for a while waiting for them to to go back and. Um, Sure enough, they came out of the restaurant and uh, I saw them and I just went up to them and I, I tried to ask them some questions about the Synod and, and about some related matters, but they, you know, pretty disdainfully begged off. And uh, and then I had a little chat with uh, Cardinal O'Malley about, um, you know, what are what are Orthodox Catholics supposed to do if they want to reach out to a cardinal and talk to a cardinal? You know, it's the only the only option open to us is to basically ambush them, you yeah, know, stand on, outside on the restaurant and, uh, because they're certainly not going to grant us an interview through their communication secretaries. But um, but it was, you know, I, I think if people see the video, they'll see that I was trying to ask serious questions and they just blew me off in a pretty condescending way. Yeah. OK, let me this is going to be a little bit more difficult for me to show, but I think I have it queued up here. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, good. This is on, I'm over here on Facebook now. 
It's a little bit tricky. Everybody bear with me while I cue this because I don't have the original file. Okay, so this is George Neumeyer. He's in Rome. P.O. He's he's bumped into the Cardinals after they... Well, he's, he saw the meeting at the restaurant. He waited for them to finish. And then uh, he addresses them. So here we go. Excuse me. Hi, I'm an American journalist. I was wondering if I could ask you some questions. If you just have, just very briefly. So the guy in the uh, in the middle, that's Cardinal Tobin. Uh, Y'all yeah. will know him because he tweeted out uh, a while back, "I love you" to somebody in Nighty Night Baby. Wasn't it Nighty Night Baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, uh, uh, he said he said a night, Nighty Night Baby, and and then he he did not intend for that tweet to be public. It was an <laughs> accidental tweet. And then, um, and then when he was called on it and asked, who are you, who are you addressing? He said, Oh, I was, I was writing to my sister, one of my sisters, right. which, uh, an, an explanation, which nobody has bought. And, um, I, I actually found out uh, last year that there was an Italian soap actor, uh, living at, in his rectory at, in Newark. And at the November Baltimore USCCB meeting, I went up to him and I said, I said to, to Cardinal Tobin, I said, is it true that Francesco Castiglione, this actor, is living in your rectory? And he had to admit that he that he was. Or, or And he, he said, oh, yes, temporarily. Yes, he was living there temporarily. Well, it wasn't until my report that they moved him out and put him on a plane back to Italy. Or, you know, after a few days or weeks, something like that. But basically, once once it went public that he was living at the rectory, they moved to, you know, make sure that he had, he got out of the country. And so that's why in this video, you'll see that Tobin uh, knows my name. You know, he, he, oh, yeah. he, he says, oh, George, oh, George, because he, he's already familiar with my work uh, through this Francesco Castiglione story. Now, were you the one that broke the story that the Italian male model was living with with Tobin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see, heard guys, that. this is. This is why I'm saying, you guys, we have to support George Newmeyer, right? So hit. I'm look. I'm not getting any money for this. I just want George Newmeyer to continue to do research. So he, he, of course, a man has to have food. He has to be able to travel. He has to be able to do research. So there's a link for George Newmeyer's GoFundMe underneath this video. I want everybody watching this video to go and donate some money and help out George. So. Okay, so yeah, Tobin is not, he's definitely not happy because you broke the story that he's got an Italian lover boy living in his house around this time in which he tweeted out by accident, Nighty Night Baby. By the way, George, I would I would have donated $10,000 to, to you at the end of your little uh, correspondence with him if you had said, Cardinal Tobin, Nighty Night Baby. <laughs> that would have yeah. been, that been yeah, so well, epic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was um, I was trying to convey to them my uh, my seriousness about the Senate, and so yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to be non snarky, you know, during our exchange. But yeah, it, it is funny that um, you know another story about Tobin though is that before the reporting on Francesco Castiglione living at his rectory, he was actually supposed to get Washington D.C. He was supposed to be the next Archbishop mm -hmm. of Washington D.C. I had heard from the DC chancery that they were preparing for Tobin to come down. And then that my report on Castiglione living at his rectory came out and suddenly the focus shifted to Wilton Gregory Yeah, and uh, Tobin was denied DC. And yeah. uh, I don't know, you know, I, that it, it appears that I, you know, that report may have played a role in, um, in preventing him from getting an, an, an even more uh, high profile assignment. Yeah. Well, I mean, in Newark, well, it's 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 an unfortunate series of maneuverings because Cardinal McCarrick, ex Cardinal McCarrick, who had been Cardinal of D.C., previously had been Archbishop of Newark, so they had moved him Newark to D.C. And it looks like they were going to do the same thing here with Big Tobin. He was going to be in Newark, and they're going to move him to D.C. But then everything blew up with McCarrick. Design, you know, yeah. a, a disaster beyond imagination. And then you show he's got a male model, Italian male model living at the rectory optics are horrific at that point. So, so all right, <laughs> yeah, well, let's continue. Yeah, let's so, continue this. I, and it's amazing how smug 
Cardinal Tobin. So just so people know, the guy in the habit is Cardinal O'Malley. He's Boston. The guy in the black suit is Cardinal Tobin. He's Newark. And then I guess the guy in the sweater, that's McElroy. I couldn't really tell. Uh, it's, yeah, it's Bishop McElroy. Who's, or McElroy. Who's, uh, he is uh, probably the most ideological of the three. Mm -hmm. And he at least knows to, uh, to skedaddle you know, and not engage me at all. Uh, so he just basically takes off. Uh, but he, he's a McElroy church and, uh, uh, we could, we could talk a lot about him. He, he's actually being considered for Philadelphia to be the, uh, successor of, uh, Chappu. Yeah. So, um, he's a, he's somebody to watch. Yeah. McElroy is probably the most outspoken advocate for our James Martin. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and, uh, the most important biographical detail about McElroy is that he was a protege of Archbishop John Quinn of San Francisco. And Archbishop John Quinn was the gay mafia don par excellence on the West Coast. He was yeah. the one who uh, pulled strings for all the homosexual priests and bishops on the West Coast. Okay. All right, so here we go. We're going to run it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it from the... Uh from the top because we we kind of did a lot of intro here to help people understand what's going on in this video so here we go this is uh george newmeyer on the streets of rome last uh you said sunday night yeah sunday night yeah, yeah. yeah i was in rome sunday night here we go excuse me hi i'm an american journalist i was wondering if i could ask you some questions if you just have, just very briefly about the amazonian synod yeah, no thank you 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 said uh colonel tobin that the church has to rethink human sexuality. What does that mean? Re or her teaching on, on human sexuality. I mean, George, come on. it's incumbent on the church to, to rethink uh, the church's teaching on human sexuality. Aren't you concerned that that could confuse and scandalize the faithful? It's not, this is not a... He's, he's thinking. He's thinking. The gears are running, you know? He, I, he's thinking, I can't believe George Newmeyer's on my face. What do I say? Right? Yeah. 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 I, I popped up out of nowhere. All right. Here we go. Continuing. Yeah. Trivial question. The faithful have a right to know what uh, the church currently stands for and currently teaches. Do you... Do, uh, <laughs> I mean, is, it, it, doesn't Pope uh, Francis talk about the church being very transparent and uh, engaging in dialogue with everybody, including those on the periphery like me? Are, are these illegitimate questions, no, Cardinal O'Malley? No, but they're hostile questions. I don't I think they are. Well, they they do, sound hostile. Don't you me. understand? So he's saying they're hostile questions. How, yeah. how is that? <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're not exactly uh trick questions um mm -mm. i i yeah I mean, they're says, only, they're only hostile, all the time in, in journalism cardinal tobin you said this right clarify yeah and he just sort of like smugly laughs you off fact, <laughs> oh, oh, george newmeyer georgia yeah yeah it's it. i mean yeah it, it wouldn't have been very hard for Tobin to affirm the orthodox teachings of the church on human sexuality, but obviously he doesn't want to do that because he doesn't believe in them. Yeah. And uh, that's why he said so. so. Okay, here we go. Continue running it. The, the, the anguish that orthodox Catholics feel at seeing the faith being played with like this? Don't those of us on the conservative periphery deserve a hearing? I'm not trying to be hostile. I know that this is comes across, but that's the only way we can talk with you because your communications directors will never give us a hearing. We don't we don't get invited to press conferences. We don't get a chance to talk to you guys. So this is the only way I can approach you. Okay, but what would you propose if you were in my shoes? What would you propose that I do if I wanted to talk to a cardinal about serious matters? What would you propose that I do? How, how, how do I talk to you? It's amazing. There's just no response. Yeah. 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 This is, 
you know, we're told time and time again that this is a church of dialogue, that this is a church that wants to smell, you know, have the smell of the sheep in its nostrils right. and all that stuff. Right. right. And, and, you know, pastors, pastors should be very, very close to their flock and should always be accompanying their flock. Well, in reality, these guys want to have absolutely nothing to do with uh, with rank and file Catholics. You know, they they uh, they want to be able to go out to dinner on our on our dime. And then when we come up to them and ask them, hey, why are you uh, why are you uh, undermining the teachings of the church? They want to be able to just say, uh, get lost and uh, go back to their Vatican hotel. Yeah, and it's, it's it's ridiculous. You know, they, they act like they're these uh, independent, you know, these sovereigns, when in reality, they're, um, you know, they wouldn't exist, you know, they're part of a church that belongs to Jesus Christ. It doesn't belong to them personally. You know, they're, they're, they're acting like they're, they're acting like they're sole proprietors of a company or something. Precisely. Sir. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you ask them, how are we supposed to talk to you? We're not invited to press conferences. I, I can almost see the thought going through their minds. Duh, George, we've designed it that way. <laughs> we have meetings. Yeah. We have meetings on how to keep you out. I mean, yeah. your, your face is posted in the Archdiocese of DC. This guy can't be in any of the, any of the public churches, right? Yeah. 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 Whirl, you know, Donald Whirl paid his communications director, Ed McFadden. He paid him $240,000 and bonuses and the and and the whole point of that job was to make sure he's a communications director and he's being paid two hundred and forty thousand dollars and his whole job is to make sure that he doesn't communicate with right. orthodox catholics right and then chico noguchi the number two at world's office was paid i think 190 200 dollars and her job was to avoid phone calls from reporters as much as possible yeah. And uh, and make sure that that a reporter never could get a question in to to whirl. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 to me, the telltale sign of a corrupt archdiocese or diocese is whether it has a communication system that exists to facilitate actual communication or it has a communication system that is designed to prevent communication. Yeah. And most most of the diocese and archdiocese. They set up their communication system to ensure that no communication ever takes place between a bishop and the rank and file Catholics. Yeah, precisely. All right, so let's keep going here because because O'Malley says some interesting things here. All right, here we go. Continuing it. Let's back this up a touch. Here we go. If you were in my shoes, what would you propose that I do? If I wanted to talk to a cardinal about serious matters, what would you propose that I do? How, how, how do I talk to you? But they will never grant us an interview. I, I can't get interviews with bishops. I tried to do that with Bishop Bambera. I tried to do that with Cardinal Whirl. I tried to do that with any number of cardinals. They never give me a hearing. That's why I have to, to be creative. <laughs> well. <laughs> At least you got him to laugh a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think when these guys, all all humans, when we're put on the spot and we're in trouble, we kind of laugh in order to sort of recapture our thoughts. It's a little bit of a delay tactic. It's also a way, to, I think, to hide fear. I think these guys are afraid right now. They know a camera's on them. They weren't expecting it. They've probably had at least two glasses of wine, right? Yeah. So they're not they're not sharp. Yeah. You know, they weren't. They didn't have their communications guy prep them for a press conference, you know, yeah. they were, they are eating some amazing Italian food in Rome and having a couple of glasses of wine. And now they got George Newmeyer in their face with the, with the video camera. Yeah. It's providential. I'm glad our Lord Jesus allowed this to happen. It's interesting to yeah. see them in their, in their raw environment. Yeah. And it, and it just captures the, the distance between the Cardinals and the people they claim to be, shepherding you know i i'm you know i'm a, i'm as much a member of their flock as anybody else so uh why aren't they accompanying me why aren't they dialoguing with me uh so it's um why i, I was going really out speaking. to the peripheries yeah I, I was speaking for all of the forgotten catholics out there who try to write a letter to a cardinal or a bishop and never get a response you know or 
go to a meeting, you know, with a bishop and try to ask a question and get shut down. I mean, this is the experience that most of us have had over the last, you know, 50 years, uh, you know, is that uh, a totally non-responsive hierarchy that, that treats us like we're um, these horrible peasants to be, to be put down. All right. And, and I find that the only, yeah, the only way, the only way to get to, to uh, make an impression on these guys is to rattle their cage a bit by, by going up to them directly and, and talking to them directly. Yeah. And I, I would advise your audience to do the same thing. You know, if you, if you listen to a heretical sermon after mass, just go up to the pastor directly and say, what you said is contrary to what the Catholic church mm-hmm. teaches. And I don't know why, why you're doing this. Mm-hmm. And I don't want you to subject my children to this heresy. And I yeah, bet it, that guy will, bet that pastor will think twice before delivering that sermon again. That's right. And when you hear that, go ahead and record it. Everybody's got a, a recorder and a video camera in their pocket. Yeah. Record yeah, that sermon. Yeah. Record it. When you talk to him, have the camera on. I remember a few years yeah. ago, I heard a heretical sermon. I walked out of a mass, the Novus Ordo mass. I called my wife and told her about it. She said, go back to the church, wait after mass, and talk to the priest. She said, until... Catholic men like you confront these heretical priests, nothing's going to happen. We can't just walk out of church and be like, I don't like that. We as the baptized confirmed, we must talk, get in their face and talk to them. And I, and you know what, George, you were firm, but you were respectful. You're like, Hey, I'm sorry. It comes across this way. I just need to talk to you. Yeah. I was trying to be, I was trying to, to have a real conversation with them, but they didn't, uh, they weren't willing to do that. But yeah, what you're saying is absolutely right. People should record. They should record heretical sermons. They should record mm-hmm. confrontations with heretical priests and religious, and they should spread it on social media. Absolutely. You know, and that have a tangible, concrete uh, change for the good within the church. Yep. Yep. Because then when you record these things, it's not just, I think he said this, what he said you know, wasn't quite on track. There's an actual objective record of what was stated, what was said. Yeah. And we need that. Like this right here we're watching is an objective. It, it's what happened. You can't say, well, I think he meant this or, or this. I think this is what he said. I can't remember. It's not like a Scalfari interview. where It's all sort of <laughs> by memory. Right, yeah. This is objective. Yeah. This is concrete. Okay, here yeah. we go. I'm going to run it again, George. Here we go. Continuing the video. Now, this is where it gets interesting, folks. This is where Cardinal O'Malley actually stops walking and he starts talking to you. But they will never grant us an interview. I, I can't get interviews with bishops. I tried to do that with Bishop Bambera. I tried to do that with Cardinal Whirl. I tried to do that with any number of cardinals. They never give me a hearing. That's why I have to, to be creative. <laughs> I thank you for talking to me. I appreciate that you're talking to me. I, I know that this comes off as hostile, maybe. I'm not meaning to be hostile. I'm sorry. I'm just concerned about the integrity of the faith. That's it. Well, That's all. We're all concerned about the integrity of the faith. Sure. But we, we hope that you'll preserve the faith at this synod. So thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. All right. Well played. Well played. Very human, George. I mean... You weren't aggressive. You didn't yell at him. You didn't make any accusations. You just said, "Hey, we need to talk." And then I hope yeah. you, I hope you preserve the faith. It was the eve, and it was the eve of the synod. You know, the the, the right. synod was just about to begin, and I I uh, I just wanted to impress upon them the need to uphold the faith because you know we're going to see for the next couple you know two weeks we're going to see the faith take a, a real battering and. Uh, and O'Malley, Cardinal O'Malley, maybe of the three, of the three guys there, O'Malley is the most likely to, or, or he's the only one who could potentially raise an objection. Um, I don't, you know, he probably won't. He probably won't, but um, there's a, a small part of O'Malley that is conservative and that is that is uh, at least open to the orthodox arguments. And uh, I'm hoping, you know, that uh, that he actually does something at the Senate uh, positively, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, but you know, the I, I guess yeah. I mean, the point is is that um, we all should be doing this in our own sphere. You know, 
if you see a pastor or a priest or religious or a nun at, at your children's school who's saying something that's blatantly contrary to the teachings of the church, why not confront them and why not, right. as you say, record it and 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 uh, disseminate it? Because that's you know sunlight is the best disinfectant, and video is much more effective than the printed word. Much. And, um, you know, as I think Michael Boris has said, you know, video is king at this point. And, um, and you, you understand that obviously. So, uh, you know, you can have the biggest impact with, with video. And so I think, you know, we, we should have a thousand, you know, reporters out there chasing down bad cardinals and, and, and holding them accountable. And that's what these guys need. They're, they're, um, they've been living in a bubble for way too long. Yeah. And they just, you know, they've been held unaccountable for for decades. And uh, we should use social media and, and the technology that's available to to uh, keep their feet to the fire. Amen, amen. I love it. And not, you know, obviously not, and obviously we should do it for the right reasons. You know, we should do it for the preservation of the faith, you know, for the good of the faith. Uh, Canon 212 says, Lay people have a right, not only a right, but a duty to uh, draw to the attention of their pastors real problems in the church for the good of the faith. Yeah. And you know, you know what's amazing about it, George? Is, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, I was crossing the bridge in Rome from the geniculum over into Rome, and I passed Cardinal O'Malley on, on the bridge. And I just, I didn't stop him. But looking back, I, I said, I wish I would have stopped him. I, I should have asked him some questions. And I think we need to be like that. I mean, the, these men are, you know, Pope Gregory said the Pope is the servant of the servants of God. Yes, we have a hierarchy, but that hierarchy uh, is here to clarify the faith, guard the faith, and shepherd the sheep. That's us. So uh, I, it's perfectly okay. You cited Canon 212. Canon 212 says we have the duty to express our concerns to the priests, the bishops, the hierarchy, and everything. The other cool thing about this, George, is there are so many of us and we are on the ground we can even though they kind of wall us off at press conferences we can have access to these hierarchs i mean in may i met the pope and talked to the pope gave him a copy of the book infiltration you're on the street after you know after their dinner talking to them walking down the street i mean it's right. it's not like they're always walled off they're human too they have yeah. to be in the world and we're in the world too so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do. They do have to go out in public at some point, and uh, and 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 not only should the laity be doing this, priests should be doing this. You know, good the good Orthodox mm -hmm. priests, uh, they should also be confronting um, wayward uh, superiors. You know, Saint Thomas Aquinas said that you know uh, Saint Paul, uh, you know, was right to um, to confront Peter. St. Peter and, and correct Peter for the sake of the good of the faith and that that was, that was appropriate. And similarly, it's, it's appropriate for priests within a diocese or archdiocese to confront a heretical bishop or cardinal and for the good of the faith. And we need more of that. Uh, we need the laity and priests to come together in a, in a healthy, noble, sound resistance to what's happening in the church today, which is we're, we're seeing Catholicism transformed into a uh, a, uh, a kind of left wing theologically and politically left wing sect. It's like it's the Catholic Church is becoming the sect of Jorge Bergoglio, and that's that's mm -hmm. extremely dangerous. That's that's um, extremely uh, uh, perilous for souls and and for the future of the faith. And and uh, the people who are most committed to the religious life, you know, the people who are most committed to holiness have an obligation to stand up and and um, stop this this modernist juggernaut from destroying the church. And I think on Judgment Day, we're all going to be asked by Jesus, you know, Jesus is going to say to us, what did you do to protect my church mm -hmm. when it was under assault by the um, the highest uh, uh, ranking people in the church? You know, why, why did you just sit on your hands while these people were... Uh, while the James Martins were corrupting your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, confusing the faithful. So many people are, are are concerned now. They're like, I just don't know when I go to Mass. And, you know, it, it is so problematic. And, you know, I want to I want to address the priests. 
If you're a priest, you know, taking a picture of yourself in a Saturno, that's cool, doesn't fix the problem. Taking a picture of yourself in a cassock, that's cool, doesn't fix the problem. Taking a picture of yourself celebrating the Latin Mass, two thumbs up, but you need to speak. You need to speak. You need to preach from the pulpit and you need to call out a barrent priest and maybe even your own bishop, maybe your own superior. Now is the time for men. Now is yeah. the time for fathers. Capital F, fathers. Fathers don't let intruders into the home. They don't let their children be ill catechized by heretics. If you're a priest, I'm telling you, you might be scared. Now is the time. You must call a spade a spade. Now is the time for priests to speak up. If you don't, it looks like cowardice. And if you say, if you're a priest and you say, well, I'm taking too many hits, I'll, I'll wait. When will you, you'll wait for what? For no one ever to criticize you? Then you'll never say anything. People are all right. over and George Newmeyer. People are all over Taylor Marshall. It's going to happen. If you speak up, people are going to come after you. But what's more important? Yeah. The faith. We got we to follow the faith no matter what happens. We follow the faith till death. If they try to kill us, we follow the faith. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's what, you know, uh, we hear it in politics all the time that, you, you know, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, the same holds true in the church. You know, mm -hmm. it's because we've been doing nothing. We have not been confronting these heretics within the church. That's that's allowed heresy to to spread throughout the church and to spread to the very uppermost reaches of the church. Right. And we're we're kind of getting we're getting the bad cardinals, bad bishops, and bad pope that we deserve in a way because we did not fight for the faith. Yeah. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, we you know uh, people were passive. People were sat on their hands, and they. Uh, you know, a, an unhealthy docility uh, led people to be, to turn into quietus. You know, that heresy of quiet, you know, that, oh, give everything to God. Well, God created human beings to be instruments of his will. Mm -hmm. So we're his hands. We're his, uh, you know, we're, we're members of the mystical body of Jesus Christ. And, you know, God is going to, Jesus is going to ask us on judgment day, you know, you, you were my fist, you know, I, and you didn't mm -hmm. fight for my church while it was being destroyed. Why, why didn't you fight for my church? And I don't know what, you know, we're, we're uh, I mean, I'm not saying everybody has to, to play, has to be confrontational. Obviously, you can help mm -hmm. the church in a thousand different ways, but at least a, a bigger percentage of us needs to step up and be confrontational and stop these people, you know, people who are set upon destroying the church. We have to stand up to them. That's right. Yeah. Even if 10% of us got active, it would make a, it, it could overturn the whole thing. All right. Yeah. All, yeah. I've been saying that it would take probably in a lot of dioceses, it would take, it would just take maybe 10 courageous priests to turn a bad diocese around. If yeah. they stood up to their heretical bishop and they said, we're not going to take this anymore, mm -hmm. uh, things would change dramatically in that diocese. It wouldn't take very many people. Yes. It would take many priests. Uh, but, you know, it, it is critical that priests join the so-called resistance. Uh, they, they, we absolutely need that in order for this movement to be successful because, you know, we, you know, we can help them. We can, we can in a way, you know, be a kind of be shock troops as it were, but really they're the ones who have to come in and save the faith. Yes. All right, good. We're going to end there. We're going to pray. I want to encourage everybody. Look, we all need to do something. Maybe you can't be in Rome with a video camera talking to Cardinals. George can. George is putting the pressure on these guys. He's probably the leader in sort of underground journalism, exposing these things and letting us know what's going on. We know that the church is under attack. The faith is under attack. In the very heart of our church in Rome, it's under attack. So George is there. So I appreciate George. I follow you on Facebook. I follow you on social. I support you myself financially. And I'd like to encourage everybody, you know, give George a hundred bucks or whatever you can, help him out so that he can continue to do this work because George doesn't work for CNN. You know, he doesn't get a, a $200,000, $100,000, any thousand dollar salary from anybody. He's doing this bootstrap. So please help him out. The link to do that, it's the George Newmeyer GoFundMe. 
just underneath this video. I've put the link there. Click on that link and please uh, help George. Again, I'm not getting any of this money. I just want to see George continue to do good journalism and let us know what's going on here in America, Washington, D.C., and now also Rome. So, George, thanks for being on with us today. Great. Thank, thank you very much for having me. All right. We're going we're gonna to close in a prayer, George. Don't go anywhere. We're going to say the Hail Mary in Latin. In nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And we pray this. Uh, today's the, in the old calendar, it's the feast of the maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we ask Our Lady, who's the mother of the church, to pray for our church, in particular, to pray for the church of Rome, the city of Rome. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in moriebus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et etor mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. St. Pius X, pray for us, St. Pius V, pray for us, St. Peter, pray for us, all holy popes, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, everybody, that's George Newmeyer. Please follow him on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle, George? Oh, it's just George uh, Newmeyer uh, at George Newmeyer. Okay, at George Newmeyer. Follow him on Facebook, and then again, please go to his GoFundMe. The link is below. Give the man some money. Make a make a donation. Help him to continue this good work. Uh, it's not all that rewarding, but the man does need to be able to to take care of himself. So please support him, and hopefully we'll get more news to come. And and George, hopefully come on again in the future. I'll be happy. Thank you for having me. All right. Blessings for your time in Rome and, and safe travels on the way back. Thanks a lot. All right, everybody, please subscribe, like the video, and most importantly, share this video on Facebook. Share right now. Hit the share button, bottom right below the video. Share this video on Facebook. That's been getting a lot of people uh, exposed to this material and, and learning about what's going on in, in Rome and in the Catholic Church. So please share this on Facebook and on Twitter. Really appreciate it. God bless you. We'll see you uh, on Monday. We'll be talking more about uh, the Amazonian Synod with Michael Hitchborn. Till then, signing off. God bless.